So Jesus is telling him, you are going to go and be a minister of what I'm now saying and what I'll say to you in the future. Then he says, verse 17, delivering you from the people and from the Gentiles. Now we have to stop just for a moment and talk about who Gentiles are. In the, uh, in the Old Testament, God's chosen people were limited to one nation, the nation of Israel. And it was a racial group, but also a religious group. And it was a limited body. And if someone wanted to join and be one of, in God's covenant, you had to join up with the nation of Israel and become... And there were people who did that in the Old Testament. But in the New Testament, or, or it, at that time, in the, in the Old Testament, uh, the Jews, we might say, the nation of Israel, were the covenant people of God. They were the insiders. And everybody else was excluded. Everybody else were outsiders. And they were called Gentiles. And the Gentiles were people who were outside the covenant, outside the benefits of the covenant. And guess what? That would be people just like you and me. We would have been, at that earlier time, we would have all been outsiders. In fact, you can read in the Gospels, and this is troubling to some people, you can read in the Gospels where people who were Gentiles came to Jesus with needs, and he said he would say he would turn them away. Like there was a woman who she's called the Syrophoenician woman in the Gospels. It's troubling to many people. She comes to Jesus, and she has a, a daughter who's troubled with spirits, and she says, "Come and minister to my daughter." And first Jesus ignores her, and then she persists, and finally Jesus says, "I am not sent to anyone except the lost sheep of the house of Israel." And she was not part of that group. And in his earthly ministry, that's true, and that's something we should keep in mind. That he he said it himself. And that's bothersome. You know, I've heard all kinds of explanations for why he said that. Some people said, well, he was just being really tricky and he was using reverse psychology. No, it's, he was just telling the truth. <laughs> he, he came in his earthly ministry, first of all, to fulfill all the promises made to the fathers, to those old covenant people of God. Everybody else were, at that time, outsiders. But now Jesus is appearing to Paul, this Saul who becomes Paul, and he says, I'm sending you to those outsiders, to the Gentiles. Uh, that's who, see, in the New Covenant, God's drawn the circle wider, and not just a limited group, but everybody's included. Everybody who believes is included. And he says, I'm sending you to the Gentiles. That's everybody, the outsiders. Uh, and, and not that Paul neglected his own people. He didn't at all. He was very uh, uh, faithful to, uh, to preach to the Jews as well. But Paul, and, and you'll read it in his writings, to the Jew and also to the Gentile, he says. Uh, and here's what he's preaching, verse 18. The purpose is to open their eyes. Now, we're not blind physically, but uh, spiritually speaking, to open their eyes, that means it's a metaphor to mean to understand. We sang it this morning, open the eyes of my heart. Now, does your heart have eyes? Well, in a metaphorical sense, in a spiritual sense, it means to give understanding. Uh, Paul's preaching is, is meant by Jesus to give understanding, to open the eyes, uh, to turn from darkness to light, uh, from the power of Satan, unto God. And the end result is that they may receive forgiveness of sins uh, by, by seeing, uh, by understanding and turning from darkness to light. They may receive forgiveness of sins and an inheritance. An inheritance is something that someone dies and, and gives to you. And uh, Jesus is the one who died and the inheritance is all the blessings of God. Among, which, uh, uh, among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. And here in this nice little verse, we find out how a person is sanctified. Now, you ask some people, how do you get sanctified? And they'll say, don't play cards or go to dances. Now, that's, you know, that, that's not, you know, the, you know the, those things are, are, are external, trivial things. The way a person get no, no, whether you play cards, no, that's your business, you know. I mean, it depends on, I guess, what kind of cards we're playing, you know. Uh, what the stakes are, I guess. But anyway, uh, but he says, how a person is sanctified, sanctified by faith in me. Uh, sanctified is a word that means made holy. Made holy or sanctified by faith in Him, Jesus says. Now one more before we get over to where we mean to go. Look at what Paul wrote to the Galatians in Galatians chapter 1. Here he's writing a letter uh, to some people in Galatia, which is not a city but a, an area, a region. And before he begins to speak to them, he's a little bit, if you read the book of Galatians, he's a little bit um, um, exercised and he's a little bit uh, excited here and a little bit uh, uh, unhappy and you can definitely get this in Galatians chapter 1, beginning with verse 11. So he is wanting to demonstrate to the Galatians the very thing that we're talking about this morning, that he has authority to speak authoritatively about uh, things of God. And he says to them in verse 11, Galatians chapter 1, verse 11, I certify to you, brethren, 
that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. Now what that means when he says not after man, he means not a human uh, message. It didn't come through men. Verse 12, just so you don't miss the point. For, neither, for I neither received it of man, neither was taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. Um, in, the, in the Living Bible it says, My message comes from no less a person than Jesus Christ Himself. He told me what to say. No one else taught me. Well, that's pretty plain. And, and what Paul is saying here to the Galatians, and uh, we're reading over their shoulders, what he's saying here is, what I've got to say, I didn't get it from Peter and James and John. I didn't even get it from Jesus when He was in His earthly ministry. After His death, burial, and resurrection, when He was on the road to Damascus, Jesus appeared to Him. And then likewise, He said later He had appeared to Him. And He said, the message I'm giving to you didn't come from men. It's not a human production. It came from Jesus Himself. And so if anyone ever says to you, that's just Paul, or that's just Paul's ideas, what, what you need to understand is, uh, Paul, what he has to say is not coming from Paul. It's coming from Jesus. And a person who says that is really rebelling against Jesus because Jesus sent Paul to speak to people like us. And the reason people bring that up is sometimes uh, there seem to be, sometimes people find seemingly contradictions. I don't believe there are. But sometimes people find seeming contradictions between some things that Jesus said and some things that Paul says in his epistles. But we must remember in cases like that, Jesus said to the Syrophoenician women, I am not sent to anyone except the lost sheep of the house of Israel. We need to understand the context in which Jesus says many things that he is speaking about. But nevertheless, Paul was sent by Jesus in an authoritative way to speak to people like us who would have been outsiders under the Old Covenant. And he doesn't assume necessarily that we know anything particular about um, about God or, 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 th or things pertaining to the Old Testament. We have the added blessing of having the Old Testament in our Bibles. So Paul is sent to introduce God and introduce this new covenant reality of God to uh, just people in general, just people like you and me. And I think it's good from time to time to uh, reassess and to refocus our, our belief system on, on, on what Paul has to say. So, beginning in Romans chapter 1, the author is Paul, and he begins in chapter 1, verse 1, with his own name, so we know it's... And by the way, uh, his name was Saul, originally, which means destroyer. He later changed it in the book of Acts. We read about it. He changed his name to Paul, which means one who builds, or a builder. So now he's going about building up what he formerly destroyed. So he says, Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ. That's how he regards himself. A minister is a servant. A servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle. Apostle means someone who is sent on a definite mission, a sent one. Did you know that the word apostle sometimes is used to describe angels? Uh, angels are, are sent ones. It's also sometimes used to describe uh, preachers are sent. Uh, one who preaches is a sent one. And Paul is specifically sent, he says, separated unto the gospel of God. Now when he says the gospel, the gospel is a very important word for Paul and it will crop up again and again. Um, we, when we see the word gospel, we think of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are called the four gospels. And that is a usage that is uh, current or you know, applies to those books. We call them gospels. But in its original usage, it didn't mean that. In its original usage, it just simply meant good news, something that's good. Not just news, but good news. Not just a message, but a good message. In other words, you know, there's many things that, there are many messages that can come to us, and not all of them good. But Paul said, "I am separated to a good message, a message of good news," and I think that's good. We, you know, I need to remind myself of that. All I'm here to do is give you good news. I don't have any bad news, and in fact, that makes it fun to do what I'm doing. Uh, I've got no bad news, only good news. So Paul says, "I'm separated uh, for this good news of God, which He promised before by His prophets in the holy scriptures." Concerning His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. That means what was promised in the prophets in the Old Testament and what Paul's message is about is concerning uh, His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. We need to also remind ourselves that Jesus is not just one character out of many. This is not just a book about all kinds of different stories and all kinds of just a mishmash of all kinds of things and Jesus is just another one. It's all about Jesus. Jesus is the focal point. The Old Testament focuses on a Jesus to come. The New Testament focuses on a Jesus who's already come and done something and done some work for us. And, and of course, there's reference to Him coming again. But primarily, we're, the, the main focus is on Jesus who has come and accomplished something on our behalf.